I'm a relatively small YouTuber. Not terribly small to the point where I get no attention, but not big enough for most of you guys to recognize me. I mainly do creepy urban exploration videos that usually don't capture anything, but I give a horror history of the place while I record around. Well, recently, I bought what was supposedly a haunted house and decided to record my first day in it. Definitely going to move now. Every little sound makes me want to jump, including the leaky faucet in my bedroom's bathroom. I did the same deal as my normal videos. Put a GoPro on top of my head using a headband that was one size too tight and gave a narration while walking around my house. There is a decent backstory to the house, but it's the same old cliché horror talk like a serial killer who was finally caught never confessed to anything and all of the victims' bodies were missing their heads. Yes, that's what it was. I embellish the story quite a bit, but that's standard practice in my field. The few creepy moments that gave my channel the extra push it so desperately needed could have been camera malfunctions or simply a homeless man upset at me for crawling on his turf. I don't think I've ever actually experienced something paranormal in any of my videos. Until now. After I finish the video, do some basic editing and chop out the boring parts, I upload the video to YouTube and go to bed. I don't really think too much about it while I drift off. I woke up to a phone exploded. Not in the literal sense, but just with notifications. YouTube notifications to be precise. My heart rate jumped as it normally means a video of mine blew up. I got in a very excited and giddy attitude that a kid gets when opening Christmas presents first thing in the morning. And then my attitude changed as if the present was actually cold all along when I started reading the comments. Yeah, the video blew up. But now I don't feel safe here anymore. 126. What the fuck was that? Bruh, you think you're so slick at 923, putting in some Halloween decor hanging from the shower. 10 out of 10 though, great SFX. I'ma be honest, didn't notice anything until 902, but then I just had to re-watch the whole thing. Scary shit, man. 025. 126. 159. 258, 504, 833, 902, 923. How are you not seeing this shit, man? It may be hidden on the camera, but you've got a peripheral, right? I'm sure if I watch it again, I'll find more. Eight minutes. Laugh my ass off. Time to leave. Those were just some of the comments that I read, and all I could think about right now was watching that fucking video. I pop down in front of my desk, open my laptop, click on the file, and go to the first timestamp that everyone is talking about. Oh, 25. I pause the video and scan the frame. It was night time and this is just after I opened the front door of my new house, explaining how I had just bought it. The camera is peering inside, looking up the stairs and up to the second floor hallway towards the left, and a couch facing a TV to the right, with an entryway into the kitchen, only half visible through the doorway and behind the perpendicular couch. The lights to the kitchen and upstairs are off right now, but illuminated enough by the light in the living room. I scour the entire frame for a couple of seconds before I see it. There, on top of the stairs, 
My blood turns to ice as I freeze in my chair. Is that a fucking head? Oh fuck! Is it fucking looking at me? Most of the head looks to be behind the corner of the wall, at the base of the top of the stairs, laying on its side. All that's visible from the light in the living room on the shadowed face is its curly brown hair, forehead, eyes, and the bridge of its nose. The lifeless eyes glinted in the flashlight from my headset, casting sickening shadows across its face and on the wall behind it. I am still frozen in fear, but now my blood is pumping heavily. I can feel the door behind me open and something staring daggers in my neck, but I don't dare turn around. Fuck no. I play the video and the camera immediately looks back towards my car and pans back inside the house. The head isn't there anymore, but that only made the feeling in my stomach even worse. Where the fuck was it now? In the video, I enter the threshold of the house and walk into the living room, moving my head around to show everyone the details and size of the room. I go deeper into the lore of the house while walking around, showing off my collection of geeky shit to my viewers. My next timestamps rolls around and I pause the video again. 126. I look around, but see it almost immediately. This one was at the stairwell again, but now the view is from where the TV is, meaning I can only see the ending part of the stairs heading towards the doorway and the wall it's connected to. You know that large space above stairs right as you begin walking up that's level with the ceiling of the next floor? That was the layout of my house. Right at the corner of that opening, the head was peering at me. Upside down. I could still only see the same parts, but the curly hair was extended by the gravity. The glint in those horrifying and dead eyes remained the same. Almost immediately afterwards in the video, I headed into the kitchen. So when I played the video, the head went away instantly from view as the camera angle moved to the entryway of the kitchen. I fast forward to the next timestamp to see it again, shaking as I moved the mouse. I didn't need to pause the video to see this one. 159. You could still only see the same parts of the head, but it was peering out of a semi-open microwave in the back end of the kitchen. Upon a closer look, if you pause the video, you could see something dripping on the handle. I couldn't handle much more of this. I felt like I was about to throw up, and I just wanted to leave the house. The feeling of being watched grew ever so stronger as I moved my cursor to the top comment on my video. Shit, the shower one, 923 at the end of the video was so fucking terrifying. You know how to make good content, man, and great acting. If it's not acting, run! I hover over the timestamp, wondering if the click was worth it. It wasn't, but I did it anyway. I just had to know. 9.23 My hands are slick, and my shakiness made me pause the video on accident. When entering the bathroom like I did in the video, you couldn't see anything in the shower. The curtains were drawn, and I have unique shower curtains, as in it was curtains, plural. 
two half curtains that could open up from the sides or in the middle like ones on a window. There was a foot gap in the middle so that when I was walking in you could only see the shelf and the safety railing holding my washclothes. You only see it for a second and with the speed of the camera was moving, pausing it made it a little blurry. It took place in the bathroom that was connected to my bedroom, the one right to the left of my desk when sitting at it. But when I walk to my mirror and the video looks through it, my angle was just perfect to the point where you could see the shower nozzle in the distance. My camera only lingered there for a couple of seconds, but that was all that was needed. Now you could see the whole head. It had the whole thing shoved through the severed throat opening its neck with the nozzle angling downwards and coming out of his mouth. The nozzle was dripping blood and the red liquid was pouring down the shaft of the shower head. But that was not the part that freaked me out the most. It was my head. My fucking head with its mouth gaping open, my curly hair, my forehead, my neck, my ears, my lifeless eyes. All of it was mine. I sat there frozen, hot, ready to simply burst out of my chest like in that scene of Alien, only with more gore. I couldn't think straight. Only one thought was going through my head and that was to pack up and leave this place forever and hire someone else to move me out. And then I heard it. A wet thud from my bathroom. A wet thud from my shower.